What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for September 14th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. This is take three because Comcast keeps cutting out on me, but let's try this again. But before we get into today's episode, in all seriousness, a couple quick housekeeping things. Tomorrow might be a little bit later than normal, uh, depending on how the game goes tonight, train schedules and things like that. Uh, Will be an episode, but if you're used to listening at a certain time, it might be slightly delayed. So don't panic. I'm not going to miss a day tomorrow. It'll be there. Uh, I did drop Back to the Future a little bit early. I posted it last night. It is up and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. We had a sit down with Ken Avalon, the president and co-founder of the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame. Great time with him, talking a little bit of the history of the Hall of Fame, how they select their nominees, as well as this year's inductees, as well as the ceremony. So good time. So go check that out anywhere you get your podcast, as well as YouTube. It's Back to the Future with a PH. Um, while we're at it, the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame. It's the place where all the Philly goats live. Why not, in honor of the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame, go to phillygoat.com, which is the goat of Philly sports-based apparel, and and see what they have on their site. Uh, The Kelly Green Eagle stuff, get ready for the Phillies postseason run. Sixers and Flyers are opening up. I keep telling you to get on the Flyers bandwagon now. Union ready to make a playoff run. buddy of mine was talking uh, about his... One of his uh, friends is having a kid, and he was on Philly Goat, and they have a selection of stuff for babies. I I knew they had kid stuff. Didn't even know they had baby stuff because I wasn't looking for it. But uh, they have Pat Burrell's My Biological Father t-shirts for uh, newborns. It's a great site. So go check it out. Spread the word about them. Tell everybody, use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. Celebrate the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame, the place where the Philly Goats live, by going to the Goat of Philly Sports Apparel. All right, so (sighs) Phillies, another disappointing loss, and it's it's frustrating only in the fact that at least two of the three losses against the Braves, they were there and could have won, and a solid game yesterday. Spencer Strider was just out of his mind. However, so was Christopher Sanchez, seven and a third, 10 Ks. And I, I really think he solidified himself as the, the third starter. Um, I, I think he's been our most consistent pitcher other than Wheeler. Uh, you could also make the case that Nola uh, Sanchez could be the second starter. I don't think I'd do that because of Nola's experience. Uh, but it, it's just Atlanta's a good team. Uh, it sucks that they won the division on our, our field, but, uh, but hopefully that means next week they might be getting some guys some reps and, and the Phillies might actually in the long run help the Phillies next week when they have the three-game series down in at Atlanta. Uh, but it was a no harm, no foul loss, as so the Cubs lost as well. So the Phillies still three and a half up on that uh, in a playoff spot and one and a half up for the first wild card, which is going to be crucial for them. You want that first round series to be in Philly. Uh, The fans are just going to be insane. We also are close enough to talk about magic numbers. Uh, The Phil's magic number to clinch a playoff spot is 13. Usually they, they don't start talking about it until it gets around 10 or in single digits. But I think now that it's under 15, and there's a lot more maneuvering because of three wild card spots. I think it's worth talking about. We'll continue to monitor that as we get closer to the Phils clinching their second straight playoff spot. Uh, I, I did see some people upset that the Phillies put congratulations to the Atlanta Braves for winning the division. And I don't know. I feel like that's an old school Philly fan mentality. It's like, you know what? They're they're a good team. Give them their kudos. Like all you're saying is congrats. But I do think, based on the way this series played out, they want no parts of us in the playoffs. So just kind of keep that in mind. Maybe it's a little reverse psychology there for, from the Phillies staff. But if you want more Phillies coverage, go to 2008 Phillies. The link is in the description. For a limited time, they are offering subscriptions to this day in Philly sports history. Listeners for 75% off get you access to everything they have on their site. And I've been telling you the the 
stuff they have there is great. You get the 2008 World Series banner t-shirt. 2008 Phils will follow your Twitter account. Uh, I highly recommend following his as well. Uh, access to autographs, tickets, and giveaways, all for $2 a month, $20 for the year. I mean, it's $20. Like, just get it, get the, or pay for it, get the t-shirt, and then enjoy the content for a year. Like I said, the link is in the description. Uh, that's 75% off a year subscription for exclusively for this day in Philly sports history listeners. All right, Sixers news. And before we get into the Sixers news, I, I do want to say, wrapping up the load management thing, my favorite comment that you guys put out there uh, came from somebody who said, well, I asked the question, what does it mean for the Sixers? And uh, basically the line of the day was, can't make them any worse. They've been doing load management for years now with Joe, and they haven't done anything. So they may actually be better. And I think that's the perfect way to sum it up. Uh, But Adam Silver did weigh in on the Harden and Dame Lillard situations. And he said a lot, I think, without saying anything. Uh, He said basically he wants players and teams to honor contracts. But if you kind of read between the lines, he's basically saying, I want players to honor their contracts and not ask for these types of trades and things like that. Um, And I don't necessarily disagree with that part of it, but I do think the the teams and the owners need to do a better job as well. However, in I don't know as much about the Dame situation as I know about the Harden situation. In this situation, Harden's just a putz, man. And I, like I said, Dame Willer, I give him the benefit of the doubt because he's never had any issues like this that I'm aware of. This is the fourth time Harden's done this. So, I mean, it's like, dude, what, like he got pissed off and opted into his contract basically is what it sounds like to me. And now he's like, oh, I want to trade it. No, like, I don't know. It's like he got, it's just, it's, it's, I feel like his situation is different. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, But before we get into the Eagles, let's go back to 2006. And on this day in 2006, Keith Primo announced his retirement after 15 years in the NHL, six of them in Philly. Uh, He just had a lot of issues after a couple concussions in his career and just, Battled, tried for a year, and just could not overcome them. Um, obviously, it was all about his, his health and safety, but he hung up his skates at, on this day in 2006. He was the Flyers' captain for four years. Uh, in his six years in Philly, 87 goals, 126 assists. My favorite memory, and probably one of the biggest memories of uh, that he's known for, was scoring that game-winning goal in the five-overtime playoff game against Pittsburgh in 2000. Uh, not only was it a five overtime game, but it was against the Penguins too, which makes it um, even that much sweeter. He was brought in because Eric Lindros was hurt with concussions in that year. Uh, and then the, the shit hit the fan with Lindros. Uh, and then that's where Primo kind of stepped in and took over that role. Made the All-Star game as a flyer in 2004. But one of the just my favorite uh, flyers of, of all time. But on this day back in 2006, Keith Primo officially retired from the Flyers. All right, time for some Eagles now. It is game day, and finally, football has come back to Philadelphia. First time since the NFC Championship game, uh, a meaningful football game is going to be played there. Uh, Before we get into the game, I have to say that the Eagles put out a pump-up video, and I, I think whoever does their social media and edits their videos is one of the best in the business. I mean, it goes back to even when we first started having tickets in the early days of the pump-up videos, and they used to do the funny cartoon uh, pump-up videos. And they're just, I mean, it's they're top-notch, top of the line. So if you're listening and you're the guy that does that or you're part of that team, kudos to you. These videos are amazing. It makes me want to go run through a brick wall. Uh, but back to the game and some Big injuries, I guess, for the Eagles. Reed Blankenship is out with a rib injury. James Bradbury did not clear concussion protocol. Kenny Gamewell is out. And Fletcher Cox is questionable as well with ribs and rib injuries. And I think this is the kind of what happens, and it goes back to what we talked about earlier in the week when Sirianni is like, maybe I ought to rethink my uh, preseason sort of 
plan and, and playing time schedule, uh, you're going to have a lot of these these injuries early on. Um, but all that being said, they are a far superior team than the Vikings. And yes, I use the word superior. Uh, I do think Bradbury being out is going to to kind of change up what they do a little bit in the secondary with um, covering uh, Jefferson. Couldn't think of his name, and I'm like, he should be on the Eagles. But uh, So it makes picking this game tough because of the injuries. I think what the Eagles have going for them is the offensive line for Minnesota isn't really that good, and they're banged up as well. Um, Cousins playing on prime time. You got that going for it. And he didn't look that sharp. Um, so I, I think the Eagles offense is going to bounce back. I do think you're going to see a different type of game. I think, especially with game well out, I, they're going to rely on Penny and Swift. I think a lot. Penny's going to be well rested, ready to go. I think Swift is going to be pumped up to play in front of the home crowd. I, I think you're going to see a very focused and motivated Jalen Hurts. He's going to be wanting to do uh, more RPOs, more running the ball, and I think it's going to eventually open up the passing game. Uh, so I do look for more consistency and better play out of the offense, which I think is going to be the difference in this game. Uh, right now the spread is 6.5. Last week, again, we went 2-0. and We took the Eagles minus the points as well as the over and both hit. Definitely going Eagles minus the points this week. I, I, I think this game could be close at halftime, but I think it's one of those games where it's you're, you're never fully comfortable. Kind of like last week. You're never fully comfortable, but at the end, you look at the final score and the Eagles cover. So take the Eagles minus 6.5. That is our official play. I, I'm not touching the, the over-under this week. Uh, if I had to pick, my lean actually, believe it or not, is under. I think everything about this game is screaming over with the injuries for the Eagles secondary, the fact that Justin Jefferson is just a beast, uh, that Jalen Hurts is probably going to be bouncing back and the Eagles offense is going to be explosive. I just think we see a different... I, I don't know. My lean is under. I'm not confident enough to make it my official play for you guys. So we're just going to go one play this week. That's the Eagles minus six and a half. And let's let's make it three and zero. Um, and again, don't feel the the pressure to bet this. Uh, last year, if you'd have bet against me, you'd have been profitable. So take it for what you will. I am in no means a professional gambler. All right, time for Philadelphia sports. Who wore it best? And yesterday, I think the biggest shocker of yesterday was the fact that Nick Foles did not get one hundred percent of the vote. Uh, he did come in with 80%. Uh, almost everybody picked him. Um, we did get one vote for Hound Dog Kelly. We did get one vote for Andre Iguodala, who wasn't even on the ballot. Uh, there was a lot of love for Von Hayes, but nobody could pull the trigger on him. <clears throat> and shockingly enough, I, I didn't think, I, I thought somebody would give us a vote for um, Norm, or, um, Sonny Jurgensen, just because like we we have some old school listeners too, but it was all Nick Foles, and and again I don't I don't disagree or think there's anything wrong with that. All right, today we have another interesting one, and in honor of Keith Primo's retirement on this day in 2006, we're gonna go with number 25. Currently, Matt Strom wears number 25 for the Phillies. Daniel House does for the Sixers, and newly signed Ryan Poling does for the Flyers. No Eagle wears number 25, and I doubt no Eagle will ever wear number 25 again. Don't necessarily know if they're going to retire it. You can make the argument they could. More on that in a minute. Some notable number 25s, Alan Rossum, Dorsey Levins, Milt Thompson, Greg Jeffries, everybody's favorite uh, three-point shooter, Ben Simmons, Dave Schultz, Dave the Hammer, wore his rookie year for the Flyers, James Van Riemsdyk, and Matt Carl of the Flyers. Uh, but we have four people today that are in the running for the best number 25 in Philly sports history. And believe it or not, two of them are Eagles. Uh, obviously, we're going to start with Keith Primo. I talked a lot about what he did with the Flyers. Most memorable moment was that goal to win the, the playoff game in five overtimes against Pittsburgh. Jim Tomey wore number 25. He was only here for a little over three seasons. He played three years. 
left and then came back for like a spell at the end in 2012. Uh, very integral part of opening up Citizens Bank Park and hoping helping to turn this team around. I think him being here also helped us get um, or I forget the timing of it. I forget whether he was here. I'm pretty sure he was here first and that helped us bring in Charlie Manuel as a hitting instructor and then ultimately our manager, which in turn led to us winning the World Series. He hit his 400th career home run here in Philadelphia. Short time, but made a, a lasting impact, and I think that's why I wanted to put him on there. Is maybe not so much for his on the field, but the fact that I mean, he helped grow that building. He helped get the Phillies kind of on the way. Um, you couldn't make the argument that he helped stunt uh, some of Ryan Howard's best years, but that's another topic for Back to the Future, possibly later on. Uh, and then we have two Eagles. We have one who's a Hall of Famer. Number 25, wide receiver Tommy McDonald. <clears throat> he was a member of that 1960 championship team, always around the team um, before he passed away, always a fan favorite, just a fun guy, pro football Hall of Fame, uh, championship member here in Philadelphia, uh, one of the best to ever do it. And then another one who is another fan favorite who was uh, traded away unceremoniously by one Chip Kelly, and that's LaShawn Shady McCoy. Uh, he's the Eagles' all-time leading rusher, has the single-season record for rushing yards, single-season record for touchdowns in a season, never wanted to be traded in the first place, kind of a local-ish guy, uh, grew up in Harrisburg, uh, but one of the best to ever do it. <clears throat> Still has nothing but love for Philly. I think everyone in Philly has nothing for love, but love for Shady. My all-time favorite Shady memory is being in the stadium when the snowstorm hit and just him running around in the snow um, and just destroying the Detroit Lions. So now it's your turn. Who is the greatest number 25 in Philly sports history? Is it Keith Primo, Jim Tomey, Tommy McDonald, or LaShawn McCoy? Get your vote for me however you can. Number 25 today in honor of Keith Primo, who retired this day back in 2006. We need – the Phillies have a nice day off. Then they go to St. Louis and then Atlanta. So rest that bullpen. That was the other good thing about Sanchez's start yesterday. Gave the bullpen a rest. But <clears throat> magic numbers 13. Go check out the latest Back to the Future. There's plenty of time to do it before the, the game tonight. Uh, had a lot of fun with Ken. Uh, and be sure to support and check out the, the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame as best you can. And as always, go to phillygoat.com. Use that promo code Jim Montgomery. We got the Eagles minus 6.5 tonight. I'm looking forward to it. That's why I dropped Back to the Future early, heading down after work. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day in the area, so go have yourselves a Thursday. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Until next time, I'll see you when I see you, and go Birds.